do 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 We're covering Halloween H two O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O O Welcome to Popcorn Talk, featuring movie discussion, news, and interviews. Popcorn Talk. We talk movies. And now, here's Popcorn Talk's guilty movie pleasure. What if we just do that? Oh, there we go. That's the remixed version for Halloween H2O. This, it, a lot of people don't know this, but what Ben just sang was were the actual original lyrics mm-hmm. of the song, and then they're yeah. like, "What if we don't do lyrics?" It was like, "Do do 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 do." Michael Myers is coming for oh 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 oh, oh, oh Lori. It yeah. was weird. It was just too much. Yeah, it, it was distracted. too on the nose. It distracted from the it was the tension. It was this. It kicked in more in the '80s when they would do a theme song with like the actual like. Actually, I think it was just ha 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 Halloween ha 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 Halloween. They had like the whole like a Gregorian monk choir singing it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ha 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 Halloween. Oh, that would have been. Or like Ev- I would have Aaron- bought that on Aaron Neville. Apple Music. Ha 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 Halloween. get a bunch of people to do that. We've lost at least seventy-five listeners now. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, no, people, boys. People love Aaron Neville. But Bo- who doesn't? Everyone does. Boys and ghouls, we're doing a very special episode of Guilty Movie Pleasures today as we cover right before the new Halloween that takes place forty years after the first one. We're doing Halloween. I got spooked out by the music. H two O. Twenty years later, not to be confused with Halloween water. <laughs> no, please confuse it please. with that. Please. Oh, yes, I'm, very, I'm super pumped about this. Hey, I'm your host, Ben Begley, and with me, as always, is Jesse, Jesse McIntosh. McIntosh. That we was good it. that we said it simultaneously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was nice. Not to be confused with Channing Tatum, in case you were, cur- in case you were confused. That is Channing Tatum. <laughs> right there. I, I do- hope Channing Tatum eventually listens to this <laughs> and goes, Damn, that sounds like me. Damn, am I doing that podcast? <laughs> Um, a special thank you to Dave Kane who yeah. subbed in for me last week. Dave I Kane appreciate it in. very much. Yeah, thank you, fun. sir. Yeah, what did we cover? God, I can't even remember. Oh, it was just a movie. Planet Terror. Oh, Planet, Planet Terror. Terror. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Halloween uh, is was one of the first slashers I saw. I, I was a wuss when I was a kid. I was a super big wimp when it came to scary things. And now you fight strangers. So I do. I fight strangers. See, there's always Good time. And bad. And just go up and just start fights. Yeah. Uh, but no, Scream was the first scary movie I ever saw. And I, I don't know if you remember when Scream first came out, there was this rumor going around. This was like before viral internet stuff. It was just like word of mouth. Excuse me, that everybody was saying, oh my God, people who saw it opening night, there were people passing out and throwing up and like <laughs> running out of the theater screaming. Similar to the word of mouth reactions to Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Now, granted, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a much more violent and shocking movie. But the opening 13 minutes of Scream still to this day is terrifying. Sure. With Drew Barrymore. Yeah. And um, at, watching the behind the scenes of Halloween H2O, which was written by Kevin Williamson, who wrote Scream, uh, Scream was heavily influenced in paying a ton of homage to, to Halloween. In fact, he's you know, in the beginning, he's like, what's your favorite scary movie? Eh, the one at Halloween? Who's the killer? You know, and they do mm. all that stuff. And, and all the rules of Scream are based on... Halloween, you know, the virgin living and things like that. And don't, do, I'll be right back. Um, but yeah, I, I remember uh, after seeing Scream, I started going through slasher films and I found, I watched the first Halloween and there's just something, even though that film as a high schooler should have felt dated to me, mm-hmm. it doesn't. And I've watched it nearly every Halloween since. And I think why the first Halloween works so well, and John Carpenter says this in the uh, the behind the scenes as well, is that because the mask is so blank and you can kind of give any of your fears to uh, to be embodied by Michael Myers, and the fact that the first one is just a random act of violence. They start making him a, her brother in part two, and then onwards it gets really weird. But the first one, the whole point was just to be like, this random small town that is this idyllic small town that's never had anything go wrong gets a horrible random act of violence that there's no reason for, and that's what makes it so scary to this day. And I think that Halloween H2O is one of the better sequels. There's some pacing issues in the middle. And you can tell this was around the time of uh, Jump Scare Central. Yeah. You know, like, because I remember seeing this in theaters and feeling the exact same way I felt about it when I watched it the other night, which is the first 10 minutes is awesome. There's some moments in the middle that's great. And then the ending is awesome. But the middle, 
especially this time around when it was like clearly Michael Myers is nowhere around yet and they're still doing like 15,000 fake out jump scares and I love real jump scares I hate it when they constantly fake you out like oh it's just a cat or yeah. oh it's just my boyfriend every or, time someone oh, entered it's just a scene. ironing board yeah. yeah 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 some of it worked like I didn't realize the dumb waiter when at first I was like that's stupid that they're building that up but then it sets it up for later as being something that injures someone you know mm-hmm. or that has a dead body in it so that kind of stuff is cool but they they just hit you over the head so much in the middle with jump scares that it bogged it down but man this third act is fun in my opinion and I love I wish Halloween Resurrection never existed because that's the movie after this where uh, turns out Laurie Strode didn't chop off Michael Myers' head. Uh, he switched his outfit with a paramedic, and that's why the paramedic was going like this. Doesn't make any sense for the rest of that scene, though, nope. for them to reach out and touch hands in that tender moment between brother and sister. And then Michael Myers tracks her down in an insane asylum and kills her. And then he goes to... Uh, then he fights Buster Rhymes in the end. It's an awful movie. Why would anyone want to fight Buster Rhymes? You don't. Hey... This is serious. We could make you delirious because too much of us is dangerous. So there you have it. So folks. dangerous. <laughs> now that I went on my huge epic rant about Halloween, because this is one of this and Nightmare on Elm Street are my two favorite horror franchises. Uh, Steve was asking me about this. I think Freddy is a more fun villain, but I think Michael Myers is scarier. That's my opinion. All right. Now, hey Jesse, what you? What's your knowledge? Of, um, as I drink my protein, my protes. Yeah, we need. First of all, I'm con- sponsored by Protes. <laughs> concerned with Ben's Ben's muscle mass just as much as he is, so I'm going to give him a moment here to. I got it. I'm good to check that. Um, it did looked like you, a good flavor too. It was delicious. It yeah. ch- tastes like chocolate milk. Mm-hmm. So, how much did you? How much have you seen of the Halloween series? Nothing. Not even the original. No. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. I am. Listen, people must think that I don't watch movies. Because so many times when we come in here and we watch one in a series, I'm like, never seen this series before. But I do watch a lot of movies. I just, like, missed a lot of the classics. Okay. Um, And once I haven't seen one of the original films, I usually don't jump in in the middle. Makes sense. um, Just because, I I don't know. I don't, I feel like I wouldn't get it. How are you, like, growing up, did you like horror films? Were you a fan of slashers? Not a ton. I mean, I didn't dislike them. I just didn't see, like... Um, I think we uh, covered the faculty mm-hmm. together. That's one that I had seen. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. I just may, maybe like one-offs. I've seen a little more than than yeah. Than like, the big giant. Have you seen any of the Nightmare on Elm Street? No, ones? I haven't. Uh-uh. Oh, Jesse, you guys see the first one. The first one's incredible. I did. I, we were just talking about this uh, before we started. I did just watch Hereditary <laughs> on, Super on disturbing. a plane. Oh God! Yeah. That was the wrong place to watch it. I don't it. know. I thought it was just whatever. No, yeah. no. That may um, have taken you out of but it. But so I've I've seen the first two screams. Um three's really bad. Four is fun. I, yeah, I haven't and I didn't watch the TV show. I know that there I was a scream like three TV show. Of it, yeah. Um I I've probably the first scary movie that I saw was Silence of the Lambs. Okay. See to me. Silence of the Lambs is is more like I, I, more like a psychological thriller, Definitely. right? And that's more that's what more I would lean realm. towards. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, but it still has like moments of pure oh, terror. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, no this uh, this was the first. Uh, so did you know anything Halloween? about Michael Myers or? Not of the myth of Michael Myers, okay. but they like they catch you up pretty quickly, yeah. right in there the in the beginning. Minutes, yeah, it's very easy to know what's going on. Yeah, um, and but, they gloss over some stuff that happened in six, where they reveal that he was actually like cursed by this cult of the thorns or something. Yeah, I don't random. need any of yeah. that. That's no, fine. The series didn't need any of that. Yeah. But it was Paul Rudd's first movie, by the way. Oh, good. For, well, yeah. this seemed like maybe it was Josh Hartnett's it was, first movie. And introducing Josh Hartnett. Yeah, so I've, I'm glad I got to experience so that. So now bit. that you experience this without any. Job. Prior knowledge to mm-hmm. the Halloween franchise, the the pace or tone of it. What was your thoughts on it? Uh, I enjoyed this movie quite a bit. Yeah. Um, and I was like a little bit braced because you had texted me like it's great in the beginning and great at the end, but like yeah. the middle uh, sort of a soggy middle or saggy rough. middle. Um, but yeah, I like didn't even necessarily feel that way. Um, you're right about the uh, the jump scares. Like there were Turns maybe seventy five percent you could have cut out. Yeah. Um, you also didn't need so many fake out Michael Myers, like her imagining Michael Myers is there. Yeah. I think they could have lost one or two of those and been fine. Yeah, I probably honestly didn't need any of them. Yeah. Like, sh- just her trauma is fine, and yeah. I don't need to, like, any weird perspective things from her. Because we know he's not there yet. Right, so yeah. So it's not scary. Yeah, we know where he is. Yeah. We're tracking him. Yeah. Um, and, like, I maybe would have liked to see him 
like I don't know, maybe kill some more people in that middle to make it less saggy. Yeah. yeah. Um, like they couldn't have done it with the mom and the daughter, but maybe if they made that person a little less likable or yeah. um, I don't know. I but think it, in the Rob Zombie one, there's a bathroom kill, and I want to say it's Danny Trejo, and it's pretty brutal. It's classic um, Trejo. But yeah, I agree. I feel like it's it, for a slasher film, it's missing any kind of kills in the middle it, it saves it all for the it end. just makes it it makes him seem and i don't know if this is like part of it but it makes him seem like a very personal killer and a very like vindictive killer because he's coming after her specifically yeah he is with Lori for but, sure but then in the beginning he kills the two teenagers so like i don't know it's just a little imbalance like yeah he he becomes and we we don't see a ton of him but he becomes really focused on getting to her yeah. and uh, sort of disregards killing opportunities, which I guess good for him, yeah, right? He's him. growing and learning and yeah. being less psychotic. I but totally thought he was going to kill LL Cool J, even though I had seen it already. <laughs> um, I Same stance I have about LL Cool J as I do about Buster Rhymes. Why would anyone ever want to fight yeah. some of the greatest rappers of the 90s? Why would you want to do that? I wouldn't want to. Um, but yeah, like it, so it was a little inconsistent with with respect to like what Michael Myers wanted and what he was doing, which I guess doesn't really matter. But like it, I think it would have helped how like plotty the middle felt. I think that uh, in the beginning he kills the kids because they're potential people that could protect the nurse who was Doctor Loomis's nurse in the first film. So she's the nurse that when he escapes, she's driving the car and he climbs over the top of it and and she's like. She was with Dr. Loomis, who was uh, Michael Myers' main doctor in the mm -hmm. asylum. Mm -hmm. When they're doing that whole VO in the beginning of like, when I first saw him, he was pure evil. I tried to, I tried to, I tried to save him, and then I spent the next ten years trying to keep him locked up. That's such a good ah. <laughs> Dr. Loomis, man. Uh, Donald Pleasance, rest in peace. He's incredible. Uh, let me find my notes. I forgot my notes. I didn't, I didn't print them out like a jerk. So I'm gonna have to put them up on. on here. What a, what a, oh. You know what? I don't even have them in here. Great. That's all right. We're just going to make it up as we go. That's what I'm going to do. That um, is exactly what I'm going to do. I did. It, it going, is like a I, really good cast, which is it's, it's surprising. Great, right? yeah. Um, yeah. With Josh Hartnett, Michelle Williams, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Obviously, yeah. Jamie Lee Curtis. Joseph Gordon-Levitt oh, cool like seven seconds. Yeah, but like it was young Joseph Gordon-Levitt, yeah. which was pretty funny to watch. Um, yeah, but yeah, like a, a really Before good. Before he collection became like of, one of the biggest actors of all time. Yeah, that was Third Rock from the Sun, Joseph Gordon. Oh yeah, OG, OG yeah. Joe Go. Yeah. So uh, let's get into this plot in under three minutes because I want to get into these sound clips. We've got some, you'll have to zoom in on them for me if you don't mind because uh, my eyesight isn't what it used no to be. No worries, I got you. Awesome. But, but not as all much right. as you would have had to zoom guys, in because he just drank his protein. One. Go. <laughs> okay, so we start off with uh, the nurse coming home. Uh, and it's the old no. There's no Michael Myers. No, she's she, and there's the kids outside with the hockey things, and she gets spooked because her door's open, and uh, she thinks somebody's in there, so she leaves. And the kids are like, "Well, we'll go inside." And Joseph Gordon-Levitt is thinking he's being a hard ass, and he's going around there, and he has his hockey stick, and he goes and steals some beers. I mean, the the um, ironing board falls, which kind of looks like Michael Myers in the sheet in the first one, before it falls. And then he gets freaked out, and he hits all the pans, and then blah blah blah. He comes running out, nothing happens. And sorry, she goes back in there. Michael Myers shows up behind her, ends up chasing her out. He, she goes to the neighbor's house where he shoved the hockey skate into Joseph Gordon Levitt's face and did something to the other kid. I don't remember what happened. I can't. I think he's yeah. hang, hanging or something. He's maybe sliced here. Sliced, yeah, something. Anyways, I don't remember. Uh, then the cops show up to her house, and as she's uh, screaming for their help, he slits her throat as she smashes through the window, and then they end up finding her dead. And then they go to the cops show up and are like, oh, you think this could be Michael Myers? And he, oh, Michael Myers was there to steal Lori Strode's file. And then we go to Lori and her son, John, who wants to go on a camping trip, but her mom won't let him because it's Halloween. Who goes camp? Why is there a school trip on Halloween? Don't know. Why is there a school camping trip at all? But yeah, they, so in high school. Yeah. But then so she's dating the counselor and he she hasn't told him about who she is. Yeah. And then Josh Hartnett says he can't go on the camping trip. So all she's his friends. witness protection. Yeah. All of his friends are like, all right, well, then we're not going to go. And uh, and so then they plan this elaborate like. <laughs> this, this elaborate like uh, orgy sort dinner. of y yeah um and so then she changes her mind and she's like all right well you can go and then he like fakes going and then they stay um and then ll cool j's their car oh no first uh first michael myers goes and steals this woman's car yeah. at the rest stop um so that he can be incognito yeah um, and then he shows up to the school he starts kind of creepy stalking her driving around and then when the kids get back uh, the kids get in trouble 
Uh, he tries to sneak out, and then L Lori finds her, finds her son John, and, and brings him back. And then that's when Michael Myers like circles around, and then the rest of the this middle section, 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 section. He's just like kind of creeping up by the gates and like scaring Michelle Williams and like finding his way in and really playing psychological mind games like he did in the first film. And then finally he gets in to the gate via LL Cool J because he parks the car out front with the, the it, it still running, and he sneaks in then, and you think he's gonna kill LL, but then he just leaves. Because he's got it, he's focused, and then and then he starts. Oh crap! Okay, here goes. <laughs> then he starts picking off all the kids. He kills off um, the nerdy kid first. You think he's gonna get the screwdriver and the, the garbage disposal, and instead he slits his throat, sends him down, and the dumb waiter. And then the girl tries to run away from Michael Myers, gets her leg broke, and it's like bloody and the bones hanging out. Then he stabs her a whole bunch of times. Then he's chasing after John and Michelle Williams, and Laurie Strode, and the dude gets stabbed. Lello Cool Gage gets shot. And, and then, uh, and then um, she goes back with an axe and fights him and chops his head off. Man, did I say hello, cool gay, on accident? You may have. <laughs> you may have. I didn't even. You power through. You had something in your mouth, and I you're did. like, "I'm I just gonna a, do it." I got a popcorn kernel that yeah. randomly <laughs> showed up. I was like, <laughs> "Here it goes." Ah, okay. So we. Good thing we didn't focus on the third act that much because that's what I heavily want to focus we on. We spent over a minute on the first scene <laughs> which i think is longer than the first scene was yeah maybe zoom in on those so i can see what's going on uh, let's see the first one. Oh, let's play the opening music because this is this is from the first halloween as well mr sandman and every time i hear this song it's such a happy song but it creeps me the hell out because of these movies and that's such an awesome sound effect. And the mom just stabs the hell out of that pumpkin in the beginning. Yeah. I mean, there's no regard for the safety of the children around her or anything. Well, she's on a mission. She's, on a mission she's to trying carve, to carve a pumpkin. Carve that effing pumpkin yeah. up. Yeah. It's probably got thick, what do you call it? Skin? What would you call that? On a Husk? Pumpkin? Sure. Sure. I just want to hear that all day. And so basically, that's, how, that's all setting up kind of the... the these movies feel so quintessential Halloween because they all take place on Halloween and it's a killer who comes back to kill specifically on this day. And that's what makes it even cooler and creepier and how he can blend in with the mask because nobody's looking for somebody with a mask. Yeah, I think maybe that's what was missing in this one in particular. There wasn't like it took place on Halloween, but there wasn't a lot of like Halloween I agree. stuff. I agree. Yeah, because the first one, there's a lot more... Um, and there's this great moment where Michael Myers in the first one is just standing there staring at them from like behind a bush. Uh -huh. And they're like, hey, weirdo, what are you looking at? And he's like, oh, what a creep. And then he just keeps staring. And Lori's the only one of her three friends that kind of goes, and this is weird. And it's just such an, but that's why it freaks you out because we've all had somebody in our life or something or moment where somebody's looking at us weird and we're like, ha ha ha. And then we're like, oh. And then they linger, yeah. And then they linger, and you're like, what? Okay, this makes me really uncomfortable. Yeah. I remember, um, God, I remember one time when we were shooting this mo this little short film I did back in Ohio. We were filming in an alley in downtown L.A., and this guy kept walking towards us. And at first, we were like, oh, he's going to like turn away or something, right? And he just kept walking directly towards us, and we were the only people in this alley. And I don't know if he had a beer can or a weapon. We could, it was something silver in his hand. And the, the only thing I could think of is Michael Myers. And I was like, we get, all right, well, that's a wrap. Let's get out of here. And he just kept just barreling toward just a slow, creepy walk. And that's what makes it. And what did he want? I don't know. Oh, we, we, we ran. Never, we never found we out. We were so freaked out. He needed directions. He needed directions. He's like, I'm in an alley. How do so, I get out of here? So the, so the first sequence, I think, is awesome. Where the nurse shows up, there's a ton of great tension being built. Uh, the music in this is very reminiscent of John Carpenter's score with some modern twists to it. Um, and there's a lot of fun stuff with the nurse coming in and realizing Laurie Strode's file is gone. And just that moment where Michael Myers shows up behind her and then disappears. I love stuff like that where he's just out of focus in the background and you see that white mask. Mm. Um, and then obviously she uh, gets freaked out and runs out, and because he comes after her in the house, right? And yes. then she she runs out, goes to the neighbors after the whole. Well, I mean, we had the we said in the in the three minute thing the jump scare with Joseph Gordon Levitt, which I do actually like that one with because the closet opens and at first it looks like they're paying homage, like I said, and when I focused on it for about a minute and a half of the three minutes. Uh, in the first Halloween, Michael Myers shows up to the girl who's waiting for her boyfriend to have sex with a sheet on like a ghost. She thinks it's her boyfriend, and then he stabs her and kills her. Mm -hmm. And um, he has the glasses on, too, on the thing. So when it first the closet first starts opening, the silhouette of the ironing board looks like that sheet. 
Yeah. So I thought that was really cool. And then his reaction to slamming all the pots and pans. <laughs> and then nobody hears it outside. <laughs> yeah. Because when he comes back out, it's not like, he's like, yeah, there's nothing in there. And they didn't go like, what was all that racket? Like, right. <laughs> what just happened in there? Yeah. It sounds like you destroyed my entire kitchen. There's the wind. But I did like when he's like, yeah, was, <laughs> there's a gust of wind when I opened up the door. Yeah. It's like a backdraft of wind. Yeah. You had your closet packed. Yeah. Was, I opened yeah. it up, everything fell it was out. Just, everything fell out. Yeah. And then it knocked everything off of your hanging pan area. Yep, the hanging pan hanging area. Hanging pan area. Um, but then I always love how Michael Myers, this happens in the end again, where he, even though he's super slow moving and creepy, he has time to... I just imagine him when he was, whenever he's not on camera, just sprinting he must. and like moving super fast. Because how did he go and stab Joseph Gordon-Levitt in the face with the and slit the other guy's throat just in this time it took her to run next door? Well, and that's also oh, part of it. Oh, he had time right? while she was looking around, but, maybe. But that's also part of what's what's scary about him is it's a little bit like a bad dream, right? Yeah. Where you like you are running and yeah. you look back and the other person is walking after you. Yeah. And you just can't get away from them. Yeah. And there's something too, like just not being able to get away from him, even though it seems like he, you you should be able yeah. to pretty easily, but he's always just there. And he's, he's always yeah. he's really a metaphor for our greatest fears, which is that you can't outrun them. Mm. You know, and mm. no matter how much you try, you'll never outrun your trauma. You'll never outrun what really scares you. My greatest fear is witnessing a crime and having to testify I, i've had to testify before. have you really yeah um there was a big brawl that broke out at the restaurant i used to work at with like 20 people and this dude was picking up beer mugs and chucking them at people and he clocked my other buddy in the back of the head and he dropped and was bleeding all over the carpet oh my God. and i was holding this guy back trying to stop him from throwing beer mugs and um i remember they were like yeah you're, you're gonna oh no i didn't have to testify they said i was gonna have to and then when they found out it was a, there was a witness, they settled out of court. But I did have to testify another time when these girls cut out on the bill, and then they beat up my manager. And my manager put her in, who's an ex-El Salvadorian gangbanger, he put her in an arm bar for 30 minutes until the cops showed what? up. What? It was crazy. He had her in an arm bar on the pavement until the cops showed up. And I had to testify him. It was, I was on the stand for like three hours. He, he at no point was like, hey, can someone else just like watch her for a minute? <laughs> no, they, they were... They were tough they were they beat the hell out of my one manager and then my other one came out and it was crazy my, my other co-worker is an mma fighter and he had her in like a bear hug and wouldn't let her go and she kept trying to grab for his junk good god with her nails listen it, was intense. it, it pays to hire xl salvatorian gangbangers it does it does man there you go that's or our just lesson. not overserve your customers i mean that's <laughs> That's your first line of defense, but the second is always going to be your uh, you staff. Didn't, you didn't hear that from me, though. It's past the statute of limitation on the oversurfing, right? <laughs> yeah, I think so. So let's get into let's get into this clip where we get when the cops show up after the murders have happened. We get this exposition, which for anybody who hadn't seen like Jesse mm -hmm. or who hadn't seen the first one in a while, since it did take place actually twenty years later, the movie itself and the timeline. Let's play clip number two. So whose house is this anyway? Marion Whittington. Dr. Sam Loomis is nurse. He was that shrink that died a few years ago. He lived here. She took care of him. No, I remember him. I saw a thing on 60 Minutes on him. He spent his life tracking down that Halloween guy who butchered all those kids up in Haddonfield, right? Michael Myers. Right. Hey, you don't think Michael Myers. I never found his body. Yeah, that was like 20 years ago. So good. And then right after that, he goes, Michael Myers, yeah, right. Right. <laughs> it's so good. But that's like... That sums up everything. And then they do this awesome uh, like panning of all of these newspaper articles that catches you up on everything you need to know. Yeah. Did you know that Michael Myers' house is actually in Pasadena? I did not know that. Yeah, I was at the Halloween convention this week, and they had a 40th anniversary convention, and they had a bunch of panels and stuff, and I had to run home. But there's a hol the, the actual exterior of it is in Pasadena, and they have a, a Michael Myers like mannequin in the yard, and I was so bummed I didn't go take a photo. Is it with that. privately owned? Like who? Uh, I may I can't. I don't and know. The owners just lean into it. I, I would assume. Yeah. Yeah. Um, shout out to those cops though for never following up. <laughs> yeah, that's the best. <laughs> yeah, great job by them. <laughs> just being like, well, this seems, this seems bad. They didn't even look to see like what may have been missing because no. clearly there's an empty folder on the desk that says Laurie Strode. Yep. Michael Myers took that and then blatantly left it out left to be right like, there. guess what? You know, and Added to her. wouldn't the cops go, wait a minute, Laurie was the one who 
was one of the girls that were that were killed off in a car accident later on. Any any cop worth his salt would have. I think these cops basically served as exposition machines. It was very clear because if they didn't, they would have come back at the end and been like, we got you. We got you now, sucker. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's so good. So what's this? Oh, yeah, I do have it. I do have it. Let's play this. Michael Myers. Yeah, right. (laughs) So, you know, uh, the funny thing is after the Austin Powers movies. Yes. uh, Mike Myers uh, was trying to go drama. You know, because he's actually a multi-talented actor, but he gets more cast than the SNL Wayne's World goofy stuff. And I remember reading an article about um, a major producer, after he took a meeting with him, uh, said this behind what he thought was behind Mike Myers' back, but he was actually still lingering in the room. And it just stung so hard because they were like, you think he could do drama? Michael Myers. Yeah, Yeah, right. (laughs) And then Studio 54 happened, and he showed them. Sure did, and has been working consistently since. <laughs> he was in this really bad movie called Terminal that he was great in, but the movie's terrible. Yeah, yeah, movie it's a real, real feel-good Hollywood story right there. <laughs> I'm waiting on Austin Powers 4. I love the Austin When's Powers movies. When's that going to happen? Yeah. I love the Austin Powers movies. So then we go to Laurie Strode's life. We're at the. She's now uh, Kate something. Who cares? Spade. No, that's a designer. That, that sure is. Yeah. That's a designer. Let's say Kate Spade, Kate just Spade. for fun. Uh, and she's living a new life. She has a son from a dad who is not in the picture, or dad? I can't remember. I think he just left. I think he left. He's not in the picture. Because he sent the birthday card. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 17. Yeah. With Josh Hurt, and it looks way older than 17. Yep. And I love that L.O. Cool J calls him out on getting a comb, because every scene he's in in this movie, I'm like, just comb your hair. Every just comb it. Every scene he's in from 1995 through 1999, he you feel this, that like, way. He had this flat here, and then it was always like, maybe he just suffers from a cowlick in the back that he didn't get under control until like his 30s. I don't, then just I like, have that. Yeah, but you I know. have a cowlick here that if I don't get it cut right, it sticks out like one big like loop. De- it's like a bridge of hair. Yeah, but they're highly paid hair professionals <laughs> on every single set yeah. that you're ever on yeah. who can handle that sort of thing you would for think. you. You but, would think so. Yeah. Also, not cool of bald LL Cool J to make a comb joke. Yeah, I mean, come on, bald LL Cool come J. Come on, man. Come on. You don't have these sorts of problems. <laughs> so we get introduced, and, and John, Josh Hartnett's character, wants to go on this trip. His mom's super freaked out because it's Halloween, and she's like, this is the one day you don't ask me to do anything. And he's like, Mom, it's been 20 years. What could possibly happen? And, uh, you know, I don't know. Even if it had been 20 years... If my mom had a super traumatic day where she was almost murdered and all her friends were killed, Mm -hmm. even if I wanted to go on the coolest thing in the world, I might be a little more sympathetic and be like, you know what, mom, you're right. All your friends were murdered on this day 20 years ago. I'm going to respect your wishes. Yeah. He's kind of an entitled douche. Yeah. Um, he, so he's pretty rude about, about this whole thing, but he also like plays it in a very, uh, like charming ways. This is a yeah. weird, like yeah, it's a weird balance, a weird charm, but rude. Um, and but also, I was thinking, like, it's been twenty years, and she has a seventeen-year-old son, so she got pregnant two years after this. Yeah, I might have just been like, no one get near me for yeah, the next five that's a years. Weird timeline, yeah. Because like the if you watch Halloween two, which is still in canon with this, uh, it takes place the next di- like the minute the first one ends uh-huh. and goes into the night of November 1st where she's stalked in the hospital by him still. So, yeah, she, she had a tough yeah, tough had, two days. She, yeah, yeah. So I would say that October 31st and November 1st should be off limits for any fun times. Yeah, I would not. I would not. No, no. So let's do the LL Cool J intro. This is when we're introduced to LL. He turned just in time to see her into the room with her long, slender legs. They climbed high up her skirt, leading to two tumultuous, round, melon breasts. Round melon? What? This is his wife on the phone. And what kind of melon you talking about? Cantaloupe, watermelon, what? Baby, it's fiction. People like to read descriptive adjectives. It sets the scene. It's stupid is what it is. <laughs> I love his wife so much. She's such a naysayer. <laughs> melons? Why are you going to compare it to food? What kind of melons are we talking about? It's so funny. I actually really like L.O. Cool J's character in this. I just wish they did more with him. Yeah, she in the same sentence, she knocks the fact that he's being descriptive and then also says he's not descriptive enough. Yeah. 
She's but, very fickle with her taste. Yeah, I she think is. she just doesn't like his. Uh, let's be honest. His description leaves much to be desired. Sure. You know, and I think he gets it right later on. I will also say using the phrase descriptive adjectives is a little redundant. <laughs> I'm not. People I'm not going like, to lean too hard people into like this. descriptive right. adjectives. Adjectives by nature are Descri- descriptive. <laughs> so you know, people like uh, very uh, wordy descriptive yeah. <laughs> adjectives to describe things. Yeah, for sure they do. Um, so LL, let's just quickly go over him because he's barely in the movie. Yeah. He he lets John and his buddy go get go out to go get a gift, even though he's been in trouble for it several he's times. Cl- like. Maybe the worst possible worst person to guard. do this job. Yeah, he's terrible. Because <laughs> he lets job. them out, and then he lets Michael Myers in. Yeah, and then there's a scary car sitting there with the with the engine on, and his first instinct is go boop boop beep boop boop. All right, I'm going to check it out without a weapon or anything. Yeah, uh, and just he's, a flashlight. He never. It, the car's right up to the gate, so he could very clearly just go up to the gate and be like, "Hello." And shine a flashlight. Shine a flashlight. Anything. Who is it? But no, he just opens the gate. And if Michael Myers had been in the car, he could have just driven in. Yeah. <laughs> like there was no other yeah. barrier. Instead, he walks in slowly behind yeah. him. And it's such an awesome... I remember the, the shot where he walks in behind him as he's turning mm-hmm. the car off and everything, right? Yeah. And then when he gets back in the booth and he's talking to his, his girlfriend or wife again, and Michael Myers is behind him, I was like, oh, he's dead. He's dead. I'm glad they kept him around. But then they keep him around for no reason. Because he right. shows up again to just be like, hey, I'm going to go search the premises. And then he comes in, and I know I'm just skipping over LL because his is such a short moment in yeah. it. Later on, it's such another fake out where we think we're clearly in the shot. I rewound it to make sure it's Michael Myers coming around the corner. And then uh, the counselor, Jamie Lee Curtis's boyfriend, shoots like eight times and empties the gun. And then when he's shooting, we realize it's LL Cool J. And he drops, and they don't really check a pulse or anything. They're just like, they see blood, and they're like, oh, my God, we killed him. Yeah. But in their defense, Michael Myers does then just kill the, we'll get to that, kill the counselor in that moment. Yes. But, yeah, then LL Cool J is just left there bleeding out until the end when he's good, and he's like, I'm going to make a romantic thriller. And it's like, no, you have such a, I thought he was a really fun character. I wanted to, and it's only an 85-minute movie. Yeah. You could have had him have some kind of interaction, like in Deep Blue Sea with the shark. Did we do Deep Blue Sea? Yeah, we sure did. Like, have something like... like He had some great scenes with the shark. Give him a scene with Michael Myers. Yeah. I feel like they overcorrected in Halloween Resurrection by letting Busta Rhymes roundhouse kick Michael Myers in the face. Wow. And then he says, trick or treat, and takes the longest pause in film history in a close-up and goes, mother effer, it's the dumbest... I... I almost threw the mo- the disc out the window when I watched it, but I had rented it, so I didn't want to, you know. Um, I, but it's like, I, give me some LL facing <laughs> off with Michael Myers. Yeah, I mean, do that. We also, like, never see his wife, which I guess doesn't matter a whole lot, but, like... She's a great presence, She's though. great, and I would have loved a little more of... Yeah. A little more of her, just like because, like you said, the, we he's we, the comedic relief. Yeah, we have space in this movie, and there's yeah. uh, yeah, we could have just th- yeah. cut out three of the jump scares and give me more LL. Cool Throw in a little more LL in there. Yeah, yeah. So let's play. This is clip five where uh, John is explaining. Everybody takes it very casually whenever John or Lori in, say anything about their psychotic killer uh, uncle or brother. Mm-hmm. In this. So let's play this clip with John and Michelle Williams. It occurred to me today that I've never celebrated Halloween before. Who was that? Oh, we've got a psychotic serial killer in the family who loves to butcher people on Halloween, and I just thought it in bad taste to celebrate. It's in bad taste to make a make light of that. I mean, sure. I know it's been. I know he's a seventeen-year-old, but. It's also like, at what point do you tell a kid that the reason they're not allowed to celebrate Halloween <laughs> yeah, is I because would... there's a psychotic killer in the family? Yeah, like, like, there's tough conversations to have with kids. Like, hey, guess what? Uh, your your dad isn't your real dad. Or, hey, um, you know, anything. Or the sex talk. Santa's not real. Santa's not real. Yeah. And then, could you imagine being like, hey, uh, your uncle murdered all my friends yeah. and tried to kill me? Yeah. What about and like, they never found his body? I want I want to be a ghost, just like my preschool friends. Well, you can't be. You're not allowed to go trick or treating because yeah. in your genes is psychotic killer. So just know that 
Just Sleep well. Yeah. I'll buy you candy. And why don't you why don't I have any siblings, Mom? Well, uh, little did you know your uncle, when he was a little boy, put on a clown mask and murdered his sister That's when right. she was in the bathtub, I think. In the bathtub or shower? Bathroom? I know she was topless. But he stabs That's her with scissors. I have one memory of it. <laughs> he stabs her with scissors, <laughs> and it's creepy as hell. It's all from the point of view of the mask, too. It's great. you got to see the first movie. Uh, so then we go into, we have several fake-out jump scares where it's like, and Michelle Williams is walking to go to her date, and Josh Hartnett jumps out and hugs her, and like, all of this, again, we there's no reason to have them because we know that Michael Myers isn't on the campus yet. So unless there's any other killer loose, right. these are all just fake-outs for a, a cranked-up sound in the odd in the theater here's the other thing i don't know if they do this in any of the other halloween movies mm -hmm. but in this one they have scream on oh yeah on the television at some point yeah so it's this is in the same universe as scream this is in the same universe as if scream was being rented and watched by these kids yes yeah. and scream references halloween yeah so wouldn't there be people dressed up as michael myers Yes, you could see that. And also, I think it obviously it's just a nod to the writer writing of both, course. but it, it does get sticky there because then you're like, yeah. wait, but Scream is referencing Halloween right. as a movie, not as a real life thing. And this is referencing it. And in fact, Scream is even saying the rules of horror films, which is all based on this real, yes, real event. Yes. Yeah, maybe they. <laughs> yeah, they probably shouldn't have done it. But, but if you are going to do it. Then you can play with having people dressed yeah. up as Michael Myers, and then, there can be like ten Michael Myers. And that could have been a really cool yeah. way to freak people out, and and because that's what they did with Scream Two, where people were dressed up as yeah. the ghost oh, that's right. killer. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? And so I think that this would have lent itself to a little bit of that, or anybody in costume. Yeah, just, that's the bummer about this movie is that no one's in costume. Yeah, and it would have it would have given something to the jump scares that they want because even like towards the end, we didn't get a whole lot of like real jump scares. Mm -mm. There were just, there were a couple... It's just a relentless stalking for 30 minutes. A couple stalking ones, but then the stalking ones never lead to anything. Yeah. They're just like, we just see him in the background. And when yeah. he's actually there doing stuff, we don't get a ton of no. jump No, but I think the scary stuff comes from him just existing and, and being relentless in his pursuit. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I agree. I think the jump scares in the middle distill some of the tension. Mm -hmm. It just makes you kind of go, ugh. It's like the first Purge movie, not the new one that's called the first Purge, but the original one with Ethan Hawke. Where like they're running away from this guy that they've let into their house for thirty minutes of it, and you're like, we know this guy's a good guy. We're not afraid of him. Yeah, move on. You know. Yeah. So don't try and scare us from people we know aren't the villain. Anyways, let's play this one. This is great. So Janet Lee is in this movie, which is Jamie Lee Curtis's mom, who was killed. Norman Bates' mother in Psycho, who gets killed in Psycho. Mm -hmm. So Jamie Lee Curtis is Scream Queen, Scream Queen royalty. She comes from Scream Queen, Scream Queen royalty, and is uh, and is continuing that lineage. And this is a little fun interchange that they have together. Can we play clip number six? It's Halloween. I guess everyone is entitled to one good scare. I've had my share. I love that so much. <laughs> I love her reaction. I've had my share. Oh, Jamie Lee Curtis is so good in this movie. She is. She's so good. And there's just there's just a lot of tension building up with, like I said, where Michael Myers is looking through the window at Michelle Williams and all that stuff. And then he's now on campus, and he pretty much immediately goes after the kids, which we find out why he's been waiting so long as she's making out the scene grosses me out and it's not because it's two people in like their 40s making out i don't care about that but the dude that plays the counselor is chewing gum super loudly while making out with him and laying on his back and the whole time i'm just like you're gonna choke on that and you're and <laughs> and already i don't like in movies when kissing is really like loud and amplified anyways i i hate that when it's mixed like and like from the, the clothes and stuff. I'm just like, mix that down a little bit. I say mix it up. Mix it I, up. You know what? Mix it up. Yeah, and on top of not? that, he's going with his gum. And I'm like, that's going to fall in the back of your throat. And you know how long that takes to digest? Seven years. Seven Everybody years. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody knows. So this is another time, though, where they're making out. And he's like, he always told her, if you ever want to tell me what this trauma was, I'll listen. And she finally does. And he doesn't buy it at first because it's a crazy story. So let's play clip number seven. My brother killed my sister when she was 17. Well, that's sucky. <laughs> <laughs> How'd he do that? With a really big, sharp kitchen knife. <laughs> well, that's, that's like any time. 
sucky. And you know, he had to feel like such a dick after that. Because, you know, there's like that time, anytime you like say something bad and, and your buddy's like, actually, man, yeah, that person's dead or whatever. And right. you're like, oh, man. Like, you know, after he said, well, that's sucky. And she's like, no, I'm serious. Yeah. Well, also, like, if you're a counselor, maybe don't make fun of. Yeah. people's like real or fake traumas yeah. maybe just be there to listen and yeah. if you get it wrong he's a terrible counselor err on the side of like caring too much yeah. maybe be like really yeah you know? did that happen but yeah just be she, gullible she's dude dumbfounded when he finds out that she's actually laurie strode yeah and um cool little interview on the behind the scenes the actor who plays him uh it's something arkin uh whatever anyways he um he, when he first saw the original Halloween, it scared him to death, and he wanted to play Jamie Lee Curtis's boyfriend in a movie sometime. So, hey, bucket list. Worked out Good for him. Good for you. Yeah. Good for you. And then you screwed it up. And you screwed it up by saying, that's sucky. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> I think it's Adam Arkin. I think it's Alan Arkin's son? Sure. Yeah, let's say that. Uh, Adam Arkin, nice. I was right. Yes. He looks, he has a George Clooney-ish vibe to him, oh, like he TV would, George Clooney. He would love to hear you say right? that, I bet. It's yeah. like George Clooney-ish vibe. Uh, so anyways, then uh, there's that great sequence where the kid, is the nerdy kid that's in the group of... So all we have left now are the four friends, uh, and Josh Hartnett, Michelle Williams, their two friends, and we have Boyfriend and Jamie Lee Curtis and LL Cool J is off somewhere. Um, and so the first two to get picked off... The nerdy friend is there, and he's getting a wine cork, and it falls in the garbage disposal. And this awesome tense scene of him like feeling around and like debating flipping it. And you're, it's kind of like the scene in Final Destination One, where he's reaching in there, and you're just waiting for Michael Myers to. And the fact that it doesn't happen makes it even more intense because you're like you're waiting for that to just get flipped on and his hand to get chewed up. Sure. And then it doesn't, and Michael Myers ends up. Uh, he picks up the. He just. They, it happens off camera, right? Yes. And then he's. The dumb waiter is coming down, like in the in the middle, one of the first jump scares, and uh, the girl's waiting for it. And then she finds her boyfriend with his neck slit, and Michael Myers shows up behind her, starts. To, I love this the relentless slow pace towards her. He could have killed very a lot easier if he just picked up his step a little. Yeah. But it's much scarier that he he takes his time. He knows he's gonna get you. That's why he doesn't. It's inevitable. He doesn't have to rush. Yeah. I do want to say about this dinner that they're having that they're in. I guess the basement of the school. There are upwards of 500 candles in that basement. <laughs> it's super dangerous. How, like, first of all, like, where did they get all, like, candle stores don't have that How many candles. How long did it take to light all of them? Yeah. Are they, uh, are they leave the room, so I'm more afraid of the whole school burning down than yeah, Michael Myers. you could not have used the same match for each of the, like. <laughs> the, you would what, have run out of lighter fluid, what, too. Just turn the lights on. Like, what are you just doing? Just dim the lights a little. Yeah. Get a lava lamp or something. That was the most insane thing in the movie to me. <laughs> so was, set design in like the 90s to 2000 yeah. a little nuts they're like let's be romantic and throw candles but we do need to light the room so we can see them <laughs> yes. so we need 5,000 5, cameras candles, candles. candles. Yeah. and if they're making out and roll over and their hair catches on fire yeah. well, you know it was their own fault yeah it's their own fault but uh so then the girl she, it's kind of like jurassic park a little bit where she's trying to shut the dumbwaiter mm -hmm. and he's coming towards her and he just misses her she goes up, she's crawling out, and he cuts the rope, and it cracks on her leg. She pulls it out. Her leg is, not only has the flesh completely been torn off, but it's hanging off, and the bone is, yeah. is hanging. It's so gross. It's pretty, pretty disgusting. And she's dragging herself as just a blood trail behind her. It's, it's one of the coolest kills in the movie, because it's just really, like, it makes you, like, kind of... Ugh. Even you describing it right now. Yeah, I like tense yeah. stuff. Yeah. And so he comes back up slowly, and we just see him... There is something cool about not having a ton of gore, where we're ju we just see him just, just very relentless. And I've used the, you can play a drinking game with how many times I've said relentless. It's like I just learned the word today, and I'm like, well, let's use relentless. It's the word of the day. It's, yeah, it's the word of the day. So, uh, and he's just stabbing, stabbing, stabbing. And the fact that you don't see it to me makes it that much scarier and more cold and heartless. Mm. That like, there's no. Ugh. What was that? Is that a stab? Uh, maybe. Do it again. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's the only time it's just like <laughs> And he just yeah, goes it just and that's it. And she's gone. She's gone. Michael Myers just wipes her out of existence. It's so creepy. Yeah. Um then uh they go to try and find their friends, Josh Hartnett and Michelle Williams, and they see the trail of blood and Michael Myers because he 
not only kills his victims, he psychologically messes with them. He hangs her up by the light and has like the bulb in her chest that's like flag, uh, flickering out when they turn it on. Mm-hmm. And then they run off and scream and they find Lori and, and boyfriend. And then she locks him in a room. And that's when this clip happens. Clip number eight. What do we do? Try to live. Play that again because just listen to how scared he is and how badass Lori Strode is. What do we do? Try to live. I feel like that would be me and my wife. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah. well, what do we do, honey? She'd be like, try to live. Actually, no, I got I got Papa Bear now. When when anything happens, I'm like Yeah, you just drink a protein shake. I have so. uh I have that the cricket stick from Shaun of the Dead. It's actually like a uh, it was like a giveaway from the movie and I have it in, in my closet next to my bed. So if I hear anything, I go downstairs with my dog and the cricket mallet. Yeah. So if, and so that's great for intruders or if a cricket game breaks <laughs> out, game breaks you're out. ready, ready either way. Yeah. Ready either way. Uh, I love that. That's her like Sarah Connor moment. That's the Ripley moment. It's just her in that moment being like, no, I'm going to protect my son and I'm going to face this character or, or I'm going to face this trauma uh, well, it's her progression to that because I think her facing it is when she makes them leave and gets the axe. But this is like her progression to being, uh, to f- coming face to face and fighting this thing she's been running from. For yeah, years. yeah. There's also like uh, it's a little bit awkward the the wording of it, but I think it's a, an important distinction between trying not to die and trying to live because yeah. she spends the, she spends a lot of the movie trying not to in, die. in defense mode. Yeah, and then she spends the last fifteen minutes of it. Oh yeah, in in the offensive yeah. and trying to, yeah, trying to reclaim her life a little bit. It's super rad. So yeah. she gets, so that's when they accidentally shoot um, LL Cool J and then uh, think he's dead. And then poor, poor George Clooney's brother, Adam mm-hmm. Arkin, gets stabbed in the back and lifted. You know how strong you have to be to lift someone up by a kitchen knife? And that kitchen knife didn't even break. Yeah. That's a strong ki- you know, I'm not for stabbing people, but that would be a good kitchen knife to carve pumpkins with. Sure. To cut watermelons. Yes. And the melon the the big melon breasts, <laughs> like he says. <laughs> I don't want to cut melon breasts. I was just which, bringing up I was just stream of conscious thinking which of melons. Which melons are you talking about? Uh, watermelons, cantaloupes. Thank you. Uh anyway, so so that's one of the craziest kills too, is just seeing him like twitch and bleed. It's I remember that really affecting me when I saw it in theaters, and you could tell in the audience it was a visceral moment where we we're all like, oh no, oh, 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 because he's helpless and she can't do anything to save him in that moment. Yeah, I wish the she guns out of ammo. She would have just looked at him and been like, oh, that's sucky. <laughs> just to tie it all that's up. That's what you get, yeah. bro. Uh, so then she takes off running. She gets her uh, her son and his girlfriend. They, she puts him in the car, does the gate key as he... Oh, we forgot that awesome moment. Damn it. Right before... One of my favorite moments is in the movie is when they're running from him and they get the keys and they unlock it and they drop the keys outside of it and Michael Myers is l- slowly looking for the right key mm. as they're banging on the door to be let in. At first he's like swinging yeah, his knife. Swinging and, the knife yeah, at him. Yeah, yeah. And then when Laurie Stewart lets them in and then he comes up to the door and they just stare at each other. Yeah. It's, that's the, it's on the back of this, the box because that's like, that's such an iconic moment and such a great moment in the franchise. It's one of my favorites since the original. And... Um, so anyways, then she lets them go. She has them drive to the neighbors down the street like a mile away. And she full-on karate kicks the glass and gets the axe out. And yep. that's when that is her Ripley, her, her uh, Sarah Connor moment, where she's going to go actually fight this guy. So what happens next, Jesse? She Since does. Since I'm talking a lot. She, no, it's okay. Just, I, just, I feel like my protein shake kicked in, and I'm like, there must be caffeine in this. <laughs> I just love the Halloween movies so much. I never shut up about them. Um, so she, well, I, so I'm blanking on how she actually kills him and I'm only well, on she, to like when she uh, goes in the after hallway, that. she goes in the hallway yeah. and she's walking down it and he full on like, yeah, so one he's arm hanging. Chin-ups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> yep. But he one arm ch- that, I mean, he's, just to show off his strength again, he's ripped. Yeah. Uh, and she turns around and hits him with the ax in the shoulder and then she, she gets sli- uh, sliced with a knife. He just yanks the axe out and throws it in the ground and goes after her. And then she runs to the kitchen, oh. grabs all the knives, and starts chucking knives at him so and just good. misses every single so one good. of them. Yeah. And then uh, she pulls up the tray that had the knives, and the knife in one shot comes right through next to her face, and mm-hmm. it's badass. 
uh, then he's struggling to try and get it out, and and she runs off to underneath the tables in that sequence. That's, that's right. That's my favorite. Yeah. That, that might be yes. my favorite sequence. Yes, and then she's rolling underneath the tables. She can't see him, and he's on top of the tables. Um, and he's like swiping underneath. anytime she tries to roll. Yeah. So she kicks a chair to distract him and then rolls. And then he says, screw this. And he just starts throwing tables. That shot out of the, way, he's, yeah. the wide of him just walking and flipping two at a time yeah. is so good. It's so badass. And then eventually, um, she hides behind a curtain. He goes in the next hallway. She hides behind a curtain. He's looking for her. She stabs him a whole bunch of times, and they and then he falls and lands on the tables below, and we think he's dead. And in fact, LL Cool J comes in and grabs her and is like, "He's dead. He's dead. Let's go." And the cops show up. Uh, may, no, they should have maybe had should the cops have been, in the just been the same cops. That yeah. would have been nice. Should have been. But uh, she pulls one of the cops' guns out, steals the van with Michael Myers in it, drives off. He attacks her in the van, and they crash. And then he gets flung from the van, and uh, she does too, and the van pins him against a tree as it catches on fire. And there's this amazing moment where he wakes up and, and he touches his face because he always had, he, they show him briefly in the first one, and he's kind of deformed. He looks kind of uh, like something, he was injured, and especially after the second one where he's burned. He was yeah. burned alive in the second one. Not alive, he's still dead. Or he's still alive. Anyways, he didn't die. Uh, so he's checking to make sure his mask is on. And they have that tender moment where they reach out to each other. And then I forget what she says to him. Uh, I don't, does she say anything? Or does she just chop his head off? I think she just chops, I think she his, just head chops yeah. his head off. Full on. Which you got to be strong <laughs> to full on sever a head with an axe in one swing. Sure. So maybe she. Or a it, lot of when, adrenaline. When she touched his hand, she got his superpowers. Oh, he passed but it to her. But it's so good. When she cuts his head off, that should have been the end of the franchise until the new one, because the new one erases everything from two on. But and this was a great way to end it. What they cut from that scene after she did that, she grabbed a tree branch and just started doing one hand pull ups. <laughs> yeah. That's so good. I love this movie. I think it's a great way to round out the initial uh, phase of the franchise. Yeah, and I think a lot that of fun. I think that they really uh, give Laurie Strode a great send off, which is why I hated Halloween Resurrection so much. The new one, if you don't know, uh, they erase it starts forty years after the first movie. Part two and onward are deleted from the canon. And so what happened is Michael Myers never just walked away. He was taken to an asylum and he's been locked up for 40 years. And now he's going to break out to go find Laurie Strode again, which I'm so pumped for. If you're a Halloween fan, make sure you comment on this video. Make sure you tweet at us, which is your favorite Halloween movie? Uh, obviously the first one. But after that, and are you excited for the new one? No spoilers, okay? No spoilers or I will go furious on you, okay? I don't know what that means, but I'll go fast you and furious. You don't want to find out. You don't want to find out. And, uh, and make sure you review us on iTunes. So uh, that really helps out. It gets us more in the visibility. So we get maybe 22 fans on our show. Until next time, Jesse, where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Too Much Jesse and for Sketch at The Prom Losers. You can find me at The Ben Begley on Twitter and Instagram. And also, like I've said before, October 27th, if you're at the LA Comic Con, we're doing uh, at 1 p.m. at LA Comic Con at the Convention Center. We're doing a screening of the Funhouse Massacre, the entire movie. We're going to have a bunch of the cast there. So come check it out. Come say hi. And uh, we can also, you can follow that at Funhouse Mass. Uh, there's not enough characters in Twitter for Funhouse Massacre. So it sounds like we're having a fun time at church. But anyways, <laughs> until next time, what is your spooky guilty movie pleasure? From producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network, we would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only, and not necessarily reflect the views of the Popcorn Talk Network or its owners or principals.